Chapter 7, Good News and Bad News. After school, Bat and Mom were sitting at the kitchen table having a snack of sliced apples and cheddar cheese, waiting for Janie to get home. Bat liked to stack two slices of apple with one piece of cheese in between. It made for the perfect ratio of crunchiness and mushy saltiness. Thor was tucked into the sling around Bat's neck, but the little guy was rustling around more than usual, making the stacking procedure difficult. He's getting bigger, Mom said. He's not quite a baby anymore. He's more like a toddler. And toddlers have lots of energy. What did you do with me when I was a toddler, Bat asked. I made sure you got lots of exercise so you'd sleep at night, Mom answered. Bat thought about this as he bit into his slightly crooked apple cheese apple sandwich. Thor needed more exercise, and as his caretaker, Bat's job was to make that happen. Maybe I'll build an obstacle course, Bat said, thinking out loud. The front door slammed open, and Bat heard the stomping of two sets of feet coming down the hallway toward the kitchen, Janie and Ezra. He could tell it was them by the sound of their stomping. Janie's run was a sort of skip-hop sound, short, quick steps close together. Ezra's was louder and more regular and right behind Janie's. Guess what? Janie yelled, bursting into the kitchen. Her cheeks were bright red from running, and her hair, which had been curly that morning, hung in limp ringlets around her face. You got the part of the Queen and Alice in Wonderland, Bat said. Bat, Janie whined, you ruined my news. You said to guess, said Bat. It was just an expression, said Ezra. He reached out and took an apple slice off Bat's plate, without even asking first. Bat pulled his plate a little closer. Hi, Dr. Tam, Ezra said. Hello, Ezra, said Mom, and then to Janie. Honey, that is wonderful news. Congratulations. Thanks, said Janie, shrugging out of her backpack and letting it drop to the floor by the back door. I am so excited. Rehearsals start tomorrow after school. Tomorrow, said Mom, but tomorrow's Tuesday. We have rehearsal after school every day for the next three weeks, Janie said. Oh, Mom said, well, that throws a monkey wrench in our schedule. Bat knew that Mom was using an expression and that there wasn't really a wrench shaped like a monkey, but it felt satisfying when he imagined one anyway. Usually you take care of Bat Tuesdays and Thursdays until I get home, Mom said. You're not going to tell me I can't do the play, are you? Janie's voice was getting louder and higher, like the tea kettle, when it was just about to boil, because that would be totally unfair. No, no, of course not, Mom said. We'll work something out. Then she stood up and hugged Janie. I'm so proud of you, she said. Be sure to call your dad and tell him the good news. He'll be thrilled. Now, Ezra, would you like an apple of your own? Ezra, whose hand had been reaching out toward Bat's plate again, said, sure, Dr. Tam, and some cheese too? Later that day, after Ezra had gone home, after dinner and dishes and Thor's bedtime feeding, when Bat was brushing his teeth, Mom came into the bathroom and sat down on the edge of the bathtub. Bat, she said, I want to ask you a question. Bat hated it when people talked to him when he couldn't answer. Worst of all was at the dentist, when he had his mouth wide open and the dentist's rubber-gloved hands were in his mouth. And then she'd ask, so Bat, what grade are you in? Or, what's your favorite hobby these days, Bat? And there was no way he could answer without biting her fingers. Right now, there weren't any fingers in his mouth, but there was a cheek full of foamy toothpaste. Bat spat it out and rinsed his mouth and then said, What? Your sister's going to be busy on Tuesdays and Thursdays for the next few weeks, Mom said. And so we're going to have to change our schedule. I know, said Bat. You're going to have to come home earlier. Well, no, Mom said. I can't do that. Then I could come to the clinic, Bat said. I can help Lawrence. It's nice to have you at the clinic now and then, Mom said, but maybe not quite that much. Also, you'll have your sp spring project to be working on. And then she told Bat that she'd talked to Israel's dad and that he had said that Bat could come over to their house for a few hours after school on Tuesdays and Thursdays until Janie's play was over. You could ride home with them. They give you a snack, and you and Israel could work on your project. How does that sound? It sounded great for exactly three seconds until Bat remembered Thor. Can I bring Thor with me, Bat asked. Oh, Bat, Mom answered. I think that would be too much to ask of Israel's dad. Thor will have to stay with me at the clinic. Lawrence will take care of him. That sounds like a terrible idea, Bat said. Tell 
Janie, she can't do the play. That, Mom said, that doesn't seem fair, does it? And it's just for a couple of hours, only on Tuesdays and Thursdays, and only for a few weeks. We can do this, Bat, can't we? Bat thrust his toothbrush back in the holder and wiped his mouth with the hand towel. He remembered something Mom sometimes said to him and turned to her. Just because we can do something, he said, doesn't mean we should.